Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here. From our previous videos in the series about series, uh, we have found that the infinite series 1 over n, which we call the harmonic series, that diverges. We just recently in our integral test video found out that the sum of 1 over n squared converges. These look very similar and yet they have very different behaviors. So what we want to do is develop some sort of a shortcut to maybe see how we can tell without having to do a full on integral test for some of these powers in denominators. So our question will be for an infinite series of the formula 1 over n to some positive power, uh, what positive powers of n on the bottom will make this converge? And then which ones will make it diverge, right? So we want to figure out a pattern there so I don't have to do the integral test every time I just have 1 over a power. So we're going to develop a shortcut for series that look like this that we can use in the future, maybe avoid some integral tests from time to time, and this test is called the p-series test. And we're going to figure that out using the integral test, so we have to use less integral test in the future. So first, does this satisfy? Can I use the integral test on this? Well, we need to check a few things. First of all, is the formula easily written as a function of x that is positive? Yes, it is. And is it continuous on this interval 1 to infinity that I'm focusing on? Absolutely, it is. And finally, is it decreasing? Does it decrease after some term or after some value of x? And of course it does. 1 over some value to a power getting larger and larger is going to make this overall fraction decrease. So we will go ahead and use our integral test. We'll change this to the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x to the p dx. Uh, we want to just make one note, I guess, that these will all be the same type of rule for integration as long as we don't have just 1 over x, as long as the power is not 1. So we're going to assume that p is not 1, but it can be anything else. We already know what happens when p is 1 anyway. When p equals 1, it's the harmonic series, and we know what happens then. So we'll just assume that p is not 1, and then everything becomes a power rule for integration here. If we go ahead and evaluate this integral, remember that when we're doing the integral test here, these are improper integrals, so I'll need to replace my infinite bound with some sort of a dummy variable, let's say something like b, and evaluate from 1 to b as b gets larger without bound. So our integral of dx over x to the p, this is just a power rule. We can think of this as the limit b approaching infinity and let's go ahead and think of this as x to the negative p dx, maybe so it's easier to do the power rule. So if I think of it that way, I'm going to keep my limit as b approaches infinity. So the power rule for integration says that we will add 1 to the power, so x to the negative p plus 1, and then we divide by the new power, so divided by negative p plus 1. We'll take the limit of that from 1 to b. I want to go ahead and rewrite this slightly. So I'm going to go ahead and say that this will be the limit as b approaches infinity of, I'm just going to rearrange my positive 1 and my negative p in that order. So I'm going to say x to the 1 minus p, and I'm going to say 1 minus p. So everything is still the same. I just rearrange the order of my terms that I had in the exponent and in the denominator. Okay, so now if I put in my bounds here, the first term will have the limit, so it'd be the limit as b approaches infinity of b to the 1 minus p over 1 minus p, and then we will have minus, if I plug in 1, if I have 1 to the 1 minus p, 1 to any power is just going to be 1, isn't it? And then I'll have 1 minus p on the bottom. So now, as long as p wasn't 1, we said, then this will be no problem. This will give us something, but it'll just be some real number, right? This will be some real number. So the question of whether this converges or diverges really occurs in this first expression here with the limit as b approaches infinity. If b is getting larger and larger, here you'll notice it's on the top of my fraction. So let's assume that b is on the top of my fraction. If the thing on the top of my fraction is getting larger and larger without bound, then the top of the fraction blows up really large. This is just some number on the bottom, so this would diverge. 
if b happened to be on the bottom of the fraction, then we would get something that converged. I would get a real number here of 0, and then I would get some real number here, and the entire integral would converge. So the question is, how could we make b into something that would be in the denominator? Well, that simply means that I would need a negative power of b to be on the bottom. In other words, I would need my exponent, 1 minus p here, I would need that to be a negative number. And when we say negative in math, we mean that 1 minus p should be less than 0, right? So if I want to figure out what value of p will make the series converge, then that just means I need to solve for p. If I add p to both sides, then I will get that 1 needs to be less than p. In other words, if we turn that around, p just needs to be greater than 1. So as long as I have 1 over x to some power that is greater than 1, this integral will converge, and that means the original series will converge as well, as long as p is greater than 1. So we have our answer for our shortcut. Our p-series test tells us if we have the infinite sum of 1 over n to some positive power, as long as that positive power is bigger than 1, then the integral will converge. If that positive power is not greater than 1, then it will diverge. So if we look at some examples here, this is a p-series. Let's say we're using the p-series test here, and p is 3. And as long as my p is greater than 1, then my series will converge. So this converges by this p-series test. Wasn't that easy? Because 3 is greater than 1. We look at this next one here. This is 1 over n with a square root over it. This is really n to the 1 half, okay? So this is a p-series, and p is 1 half. 1 half is not greater than 1, so this series will diverge. So this one here we have 1 over the square root of n cubed, so this is like having n to the 3 halves, the square root gives us the half part, and the cube gives us the 3 part. So this is a p-series, and in this case p is 3 halves. And since 3 halves is greater than 1, we know that this series converges using this p-series test. Our next one here looks a bit similar. We have 1 over n squared and then the cube root of that, so we want to see this as n to the two-thirds power, the cube root is the one-third power, the square gives us the two in the numerator there. So in this one, p equals two-thirds. p is not greater than one, so this one here is going to diverge by the p-series test. Looking over here, just having a nine on the top isn't going to change anything. Nine times something that converges or nine times something that diverges isn't going to change anything. You can also think about, remember, property of sums. We can bump this nine out front and think of nine times the sum of one over n squared. Uh, but here, this is a p-series. p equals two. Two is greater than one, so this one will converge by our p-series test here for number six. One over four n. Again, you could think of this as bumping the one-fourth out and thinking one-fourth of the sum from one to infinity of one over n. This is the harmonic series, but it's also a p-series. p equals one, so just be careful here. If p equals one, does it converge? No, p must be greater than one for it to converge, so this one diverges. We know the harmonic series diverges as well. And one-fourth times something that gets infinitely large is still going to be infinitely large, so don't let the one-fourth distract you either. This may not look like a p-series in its actual written form, uh, but what we want to see this as is the sum from one to infinity of actually one over n to the four-thirds, because we have that negative in the power there. So this is indeed a p-series. Our p here is four-thirds. 4 thirds is greater than 1, so this will converge. Our last one on the page here, we have the sum of n to the negative 0.999. Remember just to think of this as a reciprocal, so we can think of this as the sum of 1 over n to the 0 0.999, and that is not greater than 1, of course, so this will diverge.
by the P-series test. We have a few more here that look similar to P-series but are not actual P-series. This addition of one here, this subtraction of one here, this adding another N here, these are very similar to P-series. They look similar in form um, and they will behave very similarly to P-series, but they do require a different approach when we're adding or subtracting additional terms on the bottom. We just want one over N to some power that is constant power. That is a P-series. These are not actually P-series even though they behave very close to a P-series. These are actually going to need to be compared to P-series and our comparison tests are what's coming up in the following videos. Thanks for watching everyone. We'll see you in the next one.